Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and today I'm dehydrating about 15 pounds of celery but that's not why we're here. This is kind of a tea chat or a coffee chat or whatever you want to call it. Now yesterday um, I put out a video ranting on about you know organic versus chemicals and I kind of one of one of my subscribers had left a really really long comment saying that if properly used pesticides herbicides and fungicide chemicals are fine they're just as safe as organic which I got really hot under the collar about and I want to apologize for that I work really hard today not to get caught up in the crap, okay? I've come a long way from, you know, the person that used to freak out over everything. Yes, I still get upset, of course. I mean, I'm only human. But there was no excuse for me to go off on this fellow, and for that, Mike, I apologize. You were only stating your opinion. What I meant to say in a much more calm way is that it's about picking your battles okay I'm not I'm not one of those people who has to do everything organic I wish I could but I can't afford it I can't afford sixty dollars for a bag of organic chicken feed okay so I do the best I can. I feed them uh, grains. I don't feed them pellets because I don't know what's in them. But I do feed them bag grains and kitchen scraps. So do my pigs. So do my goats. They all get, you know, a mismatch of kitchen scraps and grain feeds and hay, of course. For instance, when I talk about picking your battles, for instance, this celery I'm working with right now. Celery, you know, it's one of those mainstays in everyday cooking. Now, did I get organic? No, it was on sale. It was 88 cents a bunch, and I had 10 bucks. Is it organic? No. Okay? And celery is one of those things that because they suck up so much water from the ground, and I'm sorry my camera is shaking with my chopping, but because they suck up so much water from the ground, they are more susceptible to chemicals uh, being right in them. I mean, if you are what you eat, then so is, so is any kind of vegetable matter. So is animals, okay? If you put pesticides on them, it's going to get into the ground. And it's going to get into the food. But can we all afford to go organic? No. But we do the best we can. Now, I'm, you know, my tomatoes have not done as well as I would like. So I'm, I'm trying to ripen some in brown paper bags and, and dark corners and things. But I went to the farmer's market and I bought local tomatoes. Local being Quebec tomatoes or Ontario tomatoes. And I got tomatoes from the Food Basics grocery store and because they were on sale for a 25 pound box for $6.88. And I got Howie to bring home 150 pounds of tomatoes. And that gave me 80 quarts of stewed down pureed tomatoes. I also have a 50 pound, I have 50 pounds left to do you know, 50 pounds I got at the farmer's market and 150 pounds from the grocery store. That's, you know, uh, that's, that's 200 pounds of tomato. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, we can't all, we all do what we got to do. And I realize that um, this Mike fellow probably has an orchard and probably, you know, lives in orchard country. And, and I've done that. I mean, when we lived in Colburn, Ontario, there was an orchard right down the road from us. And we had an apple tree in our yard. And 
well, it wasn't really ours, it was our neighbor's, but it was kind of in our driveway. And those, every year at springtime and harvest, before harvest and stuff, those apples got ravaged. They got ravaged because the orchard down the road sprayed. And if the orchard down the road sprayed, where do the bugs go? I'm sorry, the camera's shaking, folks. The bugs came to my tree. So, what happens is, if you live in orchard country, and you, it's almost impossible to grow organic. It really is. Because everybody else is spraying, and that will send the bugs to your orchard. And I'm sure there, there's lots of ways to do things organically, but it's, it's expensive. So, I, I mean, I understand that it's all about choices, and this fellow probably has to make some hard choices if he wants to make a living off his orchard. Now, what I'm going to say is kind of controversial, okay? But I think, I think the preppers out there will get this. If everybody stopped spraying their fields stopped spraying their trees, stopped spraying their gardens. It would have to be an everybody thing. It would have to be almost a law, okay? Because what would happen is there would be one or two horrendous years of ravaged crops. There really would be. Because everything would just go to hell in a handbasket when it comes to pests. pests. But when the, when the smoke cleared, or when the dust cleared, eventually, everything would go back to natural, the natural order of things. Where yes, you're going to get some spots on your apples, and you're, you're going to get the occasional blight, or whatever the case may be. But it is not going to be a ravaging, because that would happen, it would be like letting the lunatics out of the asylum. You know, when you, when you get, when you stop spraying everything, they just go, everything goes, the bugs and, and all the pests and stuff will go bonkers. But one of the reasons, but eventually, like I said, things would go back to a more natural state. And I'm good with that. I mean, I've got apple trees here. I've got to shut my blanching water down. Sorry about that. But where I live, for instance, I have several apple trees. Hell, there are apple trees. I live in the Pontiac, and apple trees grow everywhere wild. I swear, for every 10 kids that threw an apple core out the, bu the school bus window and in into a ditch, they probably grew one tree, okay? So, I mean, apples are everywhere here. But we're not orchard country. So nobody sprays. And guess what? The apples are fine. Yes, you're going to get a dit here and there. Yes, you're going to get the occasional apple that's got chew marks in it. But there's really no need to spray because there is such a variety, or there's so many apple trees around that what do what pests do come? They have their choice. You look at corn in the fields, okay? Now, if you're growing corn in your garden. They keep telling you to plant them at least one to three feet apart and, and all that stuff. But you look at the corn fields and they're growing like this. I'm not kidding. They're less than six inches apart, probably closer to three. Now, how can they get away with that? Okay, they get away with that because they use, you know, fungicides and stuff. Because fungus and stuff doesn't happen if it's got proper air circulation. So there's one rule for planting in your garden, but another rule for planting in a field. Why? Because they spray, okay? So, I mean, we're kind of caught in a trap of our own creation. Trees get growing, you know, things get grown closer together and, and 
you know, if one neighbor sprays, then the other has to spray in defense of the bugs coming over and, and all those things. So it's kind of like we got to reset the balance. Now that's, we know that's, that, that's, you know, that's a dream. We know that's never going to happen. But all I'm saying, I guess, is when it comes to picking your battles, you do what you have to do. Just be really careful. I mean, I, I tried the stockings on my cabbages this year. And the stockings, A, were not long enough. They didn't get right down around the stem. B, they were nylon and they caused, it caused rotting. So next year, I'm going to try, because you know what? I'm always learning, folks. I'm always learning. There are people out there who think I know so much, and I don't. I'm not, you know, John, my, my brother John says, I'm just a dude. You know, the, he's into the dudeology of grubology and all that stuff. Well, folks, I'm no different. I'm no different than you. I'm, you know, my entire life on this journey of homesteading is, oh, my entire journey is a learning experience. Everything is a learning experience. Even when I screw up and take my, my collar out on somebody else who's just making an observation according to how they see life. And I really, you know, yes, yes, I got upset. And yes, I apologize for getting upset. Um, no, I don't apologize for my feelings. I apologize for the way I executed my feelings. Okay, I took it out on one person, and, and that was just wrong. That was just wrong. So anyway, uh, but next year with my cabbages, I'm going to, um, there are these cheesecloth bags that I, that I buy when, for stuffing my turkeys. I used to stuff my turkeys traditionally, and a lot of people don't stuff their turkeys anymore, but I used to stuff them traditionally, just fill the cavity and fill the neck cavity of the turkey and you know dig it all out but then when you go to boil the carcass afterwards to make soup you get hunks of bread and stuff floating in them but I discovered these things called stuffing bags and what they are is they are an elastic woven cheesecloth bag that you put inside your turkey and spread it open and then you stuff it and when you go to pull the turkey at, or pull the stuffing out it all comes out in one bag and you can dump it in a bowl and it's I just it's a wonderful invention you can do it with just plain cheesecloth but this bag really makes a big difference so next year because these bags stretch I'm gonna try those on my cabbages I'm really grateful that I still have cabbage in the pantry from 2014 because these cabbages were not all that obviously necessary this year. So I'm, gonna, I'm really grateful for that. So I don't have to actually can cabbage this year. So next year I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. And that's another thing. People have been wanting to see my pantry. Folks, my pantry is bloody empty. Well, it's not empty now. It's coming up. Because remember, last year, we built the addition on the house. The pantry got built last year. Uh, we built the pantry last year, so I had to can like crazy in 2014 to make up for the, the lack of canning last year. And yes, I still have, I still have some uh, food left in the pantry from last year, but I am canning like a whirling dervish this year so that I can fill my pantry up again and when that's done I will do a pantry walk anyway this is the Miss Wolfie from our half acre homestead saying you know winter's coming and I'm canning something every day but just because you don't see me canning every day doesn't mean I'm not doing it it's because you've already seen those videos yes I'm updating and do redoing some old videos like like making pectin and stuff but many of these videos over the last couple of years are fine. And if you really, if you have a question about dehydrating or canning or whether I've done something or not, go to ourhalfacrehomestead.com. 
go to the icon list and look for canning with Mrs. Volfi, uh, dehydrating with Mrs. V, in the kitchen, anything like that, and look through those playlists. And then if, if you find something I haven't done, sure, email me and ask me if I've done it or if I'm capable of doing it, and I'll make a video on it. All right? You guys, take care. God bless.